All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Racers News Network Live. What's going on, everybody? This is it. It's, it's the end of an era. The 2023 rain date special that didn't ever seem like it was going <laughs> to freaking end. But uh, we're just kind of hanging out tonight. We're going to talk about the 2023 season and i i think we're going to have a little conversation about the the giant pink elephant that everybody's been talking about over the last few days that happened in indianapolis and um just kind of wrap up the season and see what everybody thinks um again if you can't access the live stream on the rnn page please go to my personal page um zoom and groups on facebook for whatever reason don't seem to want to play well together right now or ever again who knows um but here we are me the legend and uh where where do you want to start actually you know what i want to do something different i want to do one thing i was thinking about this today I want to throw this out because the big conversation that we've heard a lot and we've talked about a lot since we've been together doing this little adventure is the next generation stuff, getting kids involved in motorsports, not just drag racing, motorsports in general, but obviously we're going to use drag racing because that is what we talk about. So I want to offer this question to you, Pete, and it'll kind of work. At least I think it will, because your son's getting into it with, you know, his his car that you guys are building. Yeah. I want to know, and for anybody that's listening, you can chime in on the chat. What is some advice you would offer the next generation of racers? So the where my son and I butt heads the most as far as racing goes is because I've done all the stupid stuff and uh, spent money that I didn't have to spend. Uh, I try and prevent him from making the same mistakes, but because he's thick headed like I was when I was that age, uh, you know, it, it's basically Whatever you try and teach your kids in life, same thing, right? You struggle, so you hope they don't have to. Uh, it's the same thing, just with the wheels underneath them. Right. Now, the re what made me think about that was I've, I've been watching over the last few days a rerun of the 12 Hours of Seaburn. Because as you know, I like, I like endurance racing. Mm -hmm. And they interviewed um, Juan Pablo Montoya, a.k.a. the jet dryer crasher. Yep. And he was asked that question about what was the one piece of advice he offered his son who's up and coming in road racing. And it just got me thinking. And I thought it would be a cool question. Yeah, the, the, the main thing is attitude, I'm going to say. Um, a lot of times I catch myself just saying, this is the way it's going to be because that's how it's supposed to be. Um, and a lot of times he's receptive as long as you give him an explanation that makes sense. Uh, and a lot of times I have the attitude of, I'm not giving you an explanation. I just, just shut up and do it my way. Uh, so you know, it's kind of a combination of everything, right? It's, it's me not being a jerk, uh, him trying to understand, uh, you know, it's just, 
uh, like you know, we've done it. My my father wasn't into racing, so I made just about every mistake that you could possibly make. And truth be told, I'm probably still making them. Um, but you don't want to see. You never want to see your kid do the same stupid stuff that you've done. So um, you try and prevent that. And while you're trying to do something good, you really don't want to be questioned about it. Uh, but in reality, it's really not questioning. It's just him trying to understand and me being a jerk about it. So it's, you know. Ex explaining, it to him, explaining it to him versus going, because I said so. Pretty much, yeah. And it's, you know, it's just a lot of it is, you know, what kind of day do you have? What time is it? You're sick and tired of talking, right? You, you teach about cars all day. Then you go to the shop and you, you deal with cars for the rest of the afternoon. Then you go home and he's just excited. And he wants to talk about cars. And and all I'm thinking about is the back of my eyelid. So, um, you know, it's just every once in a while I have to step back or I'll go over at my wife and she'll shoot me a look. And I know I'm being a jerk and uh, I just got to kind of try and figure it out. But at the end of the day, you just don't want your kids to make the same mistakes that you did and waste the money and waste the effort. Um, if you can prevent that, you you do. Um, I guess it's just I could definitely be a little more graceful in, in explaining it than I am. But Yeah, you definitely get to the point where you, you'd have a lot more fun going into the bathroom, stick your head in the toilet bowl and keep flushing until you can't breathe anymore. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> All right, fair enough, fair enough. Um, all right, so 2023, we we both, I can still remember it, we both came into the January going, oh, okay, I'm excited. This is going to be an awesome year. Things are going to be wonderful, and the, you know, the, the sky is going to be bright and crystal clear every day, and then, well... It wasn't. You know, it it wasn't a way. The, the, the rain situation didn't bother my program nearly as much as me being worried about finances with the tracks. Um, you know, I mean, for me, it, it's uh, I'm at the point where I love going racing. But if something changes and I just spend the weekend at home and doing stuff around the house or just doing nothing at all, sometimes that's just as entertaining to me as going racing, you know. Um, I, I worry about the financial status of all the tracks for obvious reasons because we've seen so many fall um, that, that I really felt for them more than anything. But uh, at the end of the day, we struggled with weather, but I, I had a pretty good time this year. I can't complain. My car ran great. Uh, all the races that I wanted to go to, I did. Um, I got really lucky when I went down to the Stein race because they had good weather. Excuse me. I feel like the, you know, the, the four or five times I picked to go racing with a were the four or five times that we didn't have rain on the summer. So I got pretty lucky as far as that goes. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you just, you know, you try and look at the glasses half full. Um, I had fun. Uh, like I said, I just I just hope that, uh, that the tracks didn't take too big of a beating about it and right. uh, were able to come out on the other side, you know. Right. I know what this one said, sorry. We definitely paid our dues this year, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. As far as, as, far as the weather guys go. All right. So, let's see. Just, I'm just flipping through the comments here. Who is the special guest tonight? Well, Mr. Mussolino, uh, divisional and national champ, you could join in if you so desired, if you're still listening. Uh, Lorenzo, <laughs> is that not special? Is that the deal or what? Very, he's, he's a we could call him very special guest, Vince Mussolino. There you go. Uh, let's see, Mr. Keister, what's going on? Jason Lawrence, uh, Jason said, take the McNasby Zane 101. That's what he would offer. There you go. 
And Rob said, live at home for as long as you possibly can. <laughs> and Jason chimed in again with hit the practice tree. And our one of our buddies in law enforcement from the great state of North Carolina, of course, Jagger Knives. How are you, buddy? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't really comment on it because obviously my son doesn't race, but he loves motorsports. And um, I don't know. I just, I, like I said, it just caught me as an interesting question and I wanted to pose it to everybody. Anybody who wants to chime in in the chat too. I, I think the thing that makes me the happiest about him being involved in racing is knowing that he'll never have any extra money to do anything bad because it'll all go to racing. So, right, he'll be he'll be too freaking poor to to want to do other really <laughs> stupid things. He'll be returning bottles to try and buy a bottle of beer. So <laughs> that's all right. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Uh, Don Don Eccles said, uh, "Have fun." Of course, Don, the 2023. Go. Uh, not much, Frank Volpe. How are you? And how are the boys? Uh, I would love to know. I don't know if Frank heard uh, what I just said about how I deal with my kid. Uh, I would love to know if he has any struggles like that with his uh, as far as, you know, just trying to stop them from making whatever mistakes he might have made uh, and how, how that conversation goes when he's talking to them. All right. What I'll do, let me repose the question. I don't know if, I don't know if he may not even have heard that. So Frank, being that you're all your boys race, um, what is the one biggest piece of advice that you would would offer or have offered to your kids to to lead them down the path of drag racing righteousness when that works out good because nick just locked nick just tuned in too perfect. so perfect uh tim barrett thank you it's always nice to talk to you too and uh the, he said if you can't you can't win if you don't go fair enough yep And people that are in the chat too, please, you be feel free to offer in your uh, opinions on 2023. <laughs> Vince, Will Horton said he'll he'll happily guest host uh, with Vince, and then they'll have a lot of fun together. Uh, Nick, not much. What's up, buddy? So, um, do you want do you want to take a, a strong leap forward into this past weekend? Sure. All right. So, some people will probably get mad, and that's okay. You know what? Here, I'm just going to do because I'm always the one sticking up for NHRA. There we go. All right. People always have things to say, and I'm always sticking up for them. I'm always giving them the benefit of the doubt. This big announcement absolutely sucked. <laughs> there, there is nothing I can say to justify the stupidity. Um, I, you know, like you and I had a conversation about. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how high up it goes in NHRA when they decide to make the statements like uh, biggest announcement in NHRA history. Right, I'm hoping that's just kind of like a middle person. And like the big people aren't the ones making the call. And I hope that after it happened, one of the big people looked down at one of the middle people and said, what the hell is the matter with you? Because uh, if that whole scheme came from the top, that's pretty sad. It was pretty sad. Granted, Tony Stewart being as involved as he is in our sport is phenomenal for our sport. Uh, it's very good, but he was already in our sport, right? If you made this announcement last year that Tony Stewart's coming in and he's going to own a top fuel team and he's going to and he's going to sport a funny car and a dragster and these are going to be the drivers, I would say that's probably a 
humongous announcement. Um, him racing in alcohol this year and graduating the top fuel next year is, I can't imagine a surprise to anyone. Um, I would have thought maybe they would have had two top fuel teams and, and uh, Leah and him would have been driving separate cars, obviously. Uh, but him taking her seat because they want to start a family is not exactly what I would call the biggest announcement in NHRA history. It's funny because Jay, Jay Lawrence, because he's tuning in, so I'm sure he'll get a kick out of this. <laughs> when the news came out, I sent him a text and I said, dude, you and I stick up for NHRA all the time, but they screwed the pooch on this. <laughs> he just, we laughed for about half an hour. It, it was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I will not knock Stewart as a racer and a business. Uh, the dude, the dude has, can, does, and will probably race more stuff than anybody could ever dream of. I remember, and he'll like be I, successful at it too. Just like I told you when we spoke on the phone the other day, you know, I remember watching him and Jeff Gordon back on the old Wednesday Night Lightning and Thursday Night Thunder shows on ESPN at IRP racing midgets and silver crown cars. And the, yep. the, the dude can, he could probably make a friggin' you know, uh, grocery cart competitive. Yeah, I mean, he, he literally could get in a top alcohol car and win the division of Lebanon Valley, and then on Saturday night, go over to the circle track and get the super modified and win in that, too. I mean, there's very few people that you could put in that category. Um, him being with us now on our team, so to speak, is huge, but he was already there. <laughs> you know, like I said, if they announced it a year or two ago when he came into it, I would say that's yeah, a pretty big deal. But um, knocking up Leah to me is not, uh, I mean, I'm happy for him. Don't get me wrong. But uh, biggest announcement in history, I think, might have just been blown up a, a little bit too much. Yeah. I mean, from a, from a fan perspective, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's... And I, I think, especially the sportsman races, right? When you hear, you know, big announcement or biggest announcement in history, selfishly, and I, I'm the first one on that bandwagon, selfishly, you're hoping that it's going to be something that benefits us. Right or something to make it more attractive, the sportsman racing more attractive or something. Um, you know, I've always said when people piss and moan about NHRA, all they care about is the pros. And when you go to a divisional, ninety percent of the people that work for NHRA are there for the sportsman racers. Right, the pros practically run themselves. Um, but, you know, all the all the tech, all the paperwork, all the, you know, keeping track of grade points and all that stuff. I mean, that's all for us. Uh, and, and they dedicate a lot of personnel to it. So when you hear that there's an announcement, seeing as how we're so involved with it, you just hope it's something that's going to be for us or about us. And that was anything but, that's for sure. I, I I won't deny I was very nervous when I called you, <laughs> and just kind of went, "Hi." <laughs> I, it, it was funny because I was at school when I was in, and I saw the hype leading up to it, and I definitely was not waiting by my computer for the announcement. Um, I just figured that I would tune in to Facebook and see what the announcement was and be like, "Okay, that's great." And then when I think I sat down and ate lunch, I eat lunch around eleven. Um, and I started scrolling through and I'm like, no, come on. <laughs> it's got to be better than this. <laughs> and then I thought, well, maybe that was just an announcement. And people are thinking that that was the big announcement. And then obviously, the more time went on and the more I read, yeah, that was the, that was the big one. So. 
You know what? Maybe they just wanted to have fun with it. Either way, it's it's not going to change most of our programs. So it is what it is. But um, from Tim Barrett, do you guys think Tony would be involved in drag racing if his wife wasn't? I'm going to say probably no, because he wouldn't have the influence on it that of being around it as much as. Yeah, I mean that's that's. Listen, everyone gets exposed to it. And then it's up to your brain and your heart if you want to take the ball and run with it, right? Um, you know, like me and my father, perfect examples. We would both go to Lebanon Valley to watch my cousin Tim Tess. And my father was totally content with discussing. I wasn't. So the next thing you know, I bought a car, I built a car, I, you know, and I worked up to what I am now where he never had the desire to do that. Um, so Leah introduced him to it. And I would like to think that him building the team, racing top alcohol, and now top fuel is because once she introduced him to it, he fell in love with it. But the only way we'll know that for sure is if you ask Tony himself. But right. um, I mean, she's she's obviously not going to be doing it. I mean, I'm sure she'll still be participating with the team, and he is. So, you know, uh, hopefully he's doing it for for the love of the sport. But either way, him having it in it, him ha having him in it gives it a lot of exposure. So, we'll take yeah. it. Uh, an article I saw the other day. You know, again, for whatever for whatever it's worth, things could change because when you're trying to have kids, you know, your schedule doesn't matter. Okay. That they're going to try and wait till after the big race at Bradenton, the pro race, because she's supposed to be driving in that event. Oh, okay, cool. So, Very cool. Um, so Jaron is listening. I'm sure everything I've said is wrong, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right with it. <laughs> God, I love it. Even Jaron, I didn't see. Now he is, he makes Jason and I look like NHRA haters because he is so pro NHRA, which I love about him. Um, but even he, he didn't come right out and say it that I saw, but he was also a little disappointed in that big announcement. <laughs> well i texted him and asked him i said so what's the on uh on uh saturday i said so all right a couple days later what's the what's the environment like there and he just kind of went started talking about something else <laughs> you know like i i think secretly uh in in we we had uh it was it atlanta is coming back for a national event no, Firebird. I'm sorry. Fire, yeah, but is it, yeah, Phoenix. Yeah, but is it, there, uh, is it, help me out, Jerron, help us out. Is it Virginia or Atlanta or so, some on the East Coast is coming back? Yeah, right Virginia, Virginia's got a national event. But they had one last year, though, didn't they? No, the, last year was okay. the, the, the... So, the, yeah, so I mean, you know, Firebird coming back, uh, Virginia having a national event. Um, I think a lot of people were really hoping that we were going to have another national event at Brandemere. Um, you know, just kind of like maybe the plans didn't go through or something, you know? Yeah, that um, kind of seems to have died. In, in, the, in the day and age, and again, I'm not a PR person. I mean, I'm sure NHRA knows what they're doing a lot better than I do, but in a day and age where we're losing tracks and we had a tough year because of rain and all that BS, um, the biggest announcement in NHRA history probably shouldn't have been that Tony and Lee are going to try and have a family. I'm, you know, just throwing that out there. Um, I, I think the tracks uh, having national events that didn't have them last year are very big news. Um, you know, especially to the local economy around the tracks. It's huge for them, right? Um, to me, that's a much bigger news story than, than Tony hopping into Leah's car. But like I said, I'm not the one that 
spends the money on advertising and public relations and all that stuff. So they did what they thought was right, I guess. Hey, did you hit your computer or something? Because you, you're crystal clear now. Oh, yeah. I thought I was always crystal clear. No, well, it's actually, you just chopping up crazy, on no, my end. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So back, all right, backing up just a little bit. We posed the question so Frank Volpe could hear it to answer it. Um, he's about, you know, the advice you offer your kids coming into motorsports. Yeah. Obviously, again, drag racing is what we're talking about here. Um, his answer was, I always tell them to do their best and have fun. Yep. And really, that is as simple of a statement as that is. If you put it all out there and do the very best you can, and regardless of the result, you either have a good time or you learn from whatever the outcome was. Nothing else really matters in the grand scheme of things, right? Right. And if if he's – whatever energy he's pumping into his kids – it's working because they're killing it. Yeah. That freaking kids already won more <laughs> rounds in a year than I have in my whole freaking life. So whatever I'm about ready for him to adopt me so he can start. <laughs> so, so now you're not only have to worry about Taylor. Now you got to start worrying about oh, it's a freaking nightmare. I swear to God, if I fit my fat ass into a junior drag store, I would buy one. <laughs> <laughs> Let all them leave so I can get into it. <laughs> Good. Um, Rob Keister, if you are still listening, would you be interested to come on for a couple minutes and talk about what you spoke about the other night? Because, um, just because, just because it's the last show of the year, and we want to hear from you. Yeah, we want to kind of help spread the word. Frank said they got to give him pep talks. Yeah, exactly. I'll tell him Uncle Pete could use a couple too. <laughs> Now, Dad, this is how you keep the parachutes out yeah. of the wheelie. Yeah. When you see the flash of the yellow, let go of the button, dummy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what other big news from PRI? Anything good? Some really cool videos of everybody driving their race cars out of the yeah. Thing. And no idiots flipping over their wheelies or anything, right? So that's good. Uh, oh, was that from last year? Uh, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe it was 2019. I think that was the, the last one before COVID. Oh, okay. And did you see the, uh, I know you're not a big Street Outlaws guy, but did you see the video that Boosted GT put out on that whole skit? No. So originally, he does a burnout by him. And it was a very mild burnout. It was nothing crazy. And goes is that the, by him. Is that and the then Willie's gets on it and goes and loses it and flips it over. Well, he did a video where it looks like Mario is driving yes. his car. Yes, I did see that. And the banana peel goes flying out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the funniest thing. <laughs> that was the highlight of this year for PRI for me. I didn't go, so I had to go by that. Um, so, all right. So Jerron brought up a good point. He told me not to cruise by it or he'll dope slap me. Um, technically he goes, well, technically it was because it had a 2.1 billion reach over a 24 hour period. As What's far that? as the Tony Stewart announcement. Yeah, that's great. But if they came out with anything, would it have reached the same amount of people? And I, I don't mean anything, but anything newsworthy. So if they came out with an announcement that said uh, Brandemere is not sold, they're going to resume uh, the same race schedule and we're going to have another mile high nationals, that wouldn't have reached as many people. I mean, the audience was there. It's not like someone turned the TV on because they heard about Tony and Lee and said, oh, let me listen in. The audience right. is already there as far as they I know. They were there for, all right, this is like earth shattering. Right, things. right. Yeah. At that point, you could have said Pete Sank is driving top fuel, and they probably would have had just as many views because they already had the audience captured. Yeah. 
you know, by making such a stupid statement like this is the biggest announcement ever. I knew Jerron sooner or later would stick up for NHRA. It was only a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> Robert. Oh, how are you, buddy? Great. To you. Great. So it is you, Chris, because me and Robert talking no problem while you're locked up. Well, your mic, your mic uh, Pete, was really, really cracky a, a, a while there. It was. Uh... Well, that's, why I, that's why I wondered if he threw his computer or something and it fixed it. No, he paid the bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's what that's what Bree was doing in the background. Okay, credit. yeah, that's right. Quick, here's my credit card. <laughs> so, yeah. so Rob, the other night you did a did a little ditty on scheduling for the 2024 season. Um, I didn't think it was my place to say anything, but I wanted you to kind of touch on stuff a little bit if you wouldn't mind um you know um pretty much i mean the the the, the season, you know it's just it's been tough this year trying to get dates i mean really when it comes down to it it's just you know i mean like i said in my in my live stream you know you know possibly the fact is that maybe we put all our eggs in one basket with running at aca um you know we did run at other tracks too like cecil and maple grove and and sometimes in the media and stuff. And, and, you know, I guess when you lose like a track like ACO, where like last year we were scheduled to have three weekends there, you know, three out of our five weekends were going to be at ACO. And then you had the Dave Stein at Maple Grove. So that's 50% of your, you know, schedule is focused around one track that when you, you know, happen to lose a track like that, the other tracks kind of look at you, you know, unfortunately, kind of look at you like oh when well, you know now you need us now you now you want us to you know you know beforehand we weren't really you know we weren't worthy of you you know to even get a phone call from you or an email from you so now like when you're kind of reaching out to some of these tracks you know you kind of get that backlash a little bit uh, you know from them you know type things i mean um i can say when probably the past 48 hours the the skies have opened and um we have a full schedule now uh which will be announced probably in the next couple of days unfortunately i can't schedule i can't announce it right now because the fact is that the adjustments have to be made by the tracks uh because some of them have made announcements on their schedules already so that that schedule has to be um adjusted um i can give major props to dana uh, Le uh nahill leone my vice president uh me and her worked feverishly um probably the past month and a half uh calling tracks getting tracks um to come on board with us and you know we we have the understanding and and um anybody's on you know class racer uh who goes on class racer it was a big discussion probably you know for a long time about how do we make national events better how do we make divisional event, events better and it pros oh there we go what was that? Oh no, for a sec. Not not me, but you guys. Yeah. So there was a big discussion on class racer about, you know, how do you make divisional races better? How do you make national events better and, and, and such? And we understand as dot ninety racers that we are fillers. Um, there's not any of us that ex you know expect us to like that we're gonna have a, a line full of people, you know, looking for an autograph when we come to the racetrack and stuff. We 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 understand that. And so we had to really just, you know, it was getting through the tracks that, you know, we don't want a full weekend of just us and that we, you know, we want, we can be a good filler for an event, you know, rather you have a double bracket race on a Saturday and Sunday and you come in and fill us in because that's, that's how we used to run things at ACO. We would run, you know, the dot 90 guys and, you know, when they're the stock super stock series, um, together on like in the morning and we would get you know two to three rounds in before they would start their bracket program and that was you know the gist of trying to get through to these tracks that you know hey we are a good filler We're, we don't need a standalone weekend and you know it did take some time to get through to, to some of the tracks that you know this is what you know this is what they are and um 
you know, trying to make it a profitable weekend because the fact is that we all know in today's age, I mean, just going to the grocery store, you know, going to fill up our RVs to go racing. Um, it, you know, it's not cheap. You know, I think Tim, uh, Tim Barrett, uh, posted on, on your site, on the RNN site about how much him and Linda spent going to national events, spending, you know, the fill up gas and everything. And we get it. it. You know, it's, you know, Tim does a hell of a lot more racing than I do. I mean, they have to go to Topeka, they go to, you know, Brainerd, they go, you know, they travel a heck of a lot more than, than I travel, but still, you know, it's, it's, it's a, um, it's a big expense for us to do what we do, but I think in the long run, and I may have pissed some people off by saying this is that I think we have gotten away from realizing that it is a hobby. This is what we do on a regular basis to get away from all the BS of work Monday through Friday. I mean, it's for us to get done on a Friday or a Thursday night or was and jump in the RV or jump in the, you know, in the truck and trailer and go racing and, and go hang out with our friends and drink beer and tell stories and pick on each other. And then, you know, we, you know, in, in the meantime, a race breaks out. And right. I think kind of gotten a far away from that mentality with a lot of things is that the fun part isn't as much as it used to be there anymore. And I've heard it from a lot of racers lately is that I'm not having fun anymore. And I think you're seeing a lot of guys, you know, selling their stuff, cutting back on what they're racing because the fact is that they, as they said, is they're not having fun anymore. And I don't know what the answer is to, to make it fun. Um, but it just, you know, I, I understand the cost thing is a, is a huge, uh, you know, kick in the rear end. And, and, you know, I, I know a lot of the, you know, uh, Jaron's, you know, favorite person, Christy, you know, he chimed in with a, with a poster or was, and, and I, I kind of went back at him and it, it was just, you know, like, Hey, for 40, you know, you guys were just talking about the announcement. Yes. It was as somebody who has a marketing degree as a college degree that has marketing on air, it was marketed way too wrong. Um, and that's, that is like the first day of, of college classes when you walk into a, into uh, um, you walk in, that's the first thing they say is the how you word something can be so misconstrued on how it's accepted by people that you're trying to reach. And I think, you know, if they had just said, you know, you know, listen, at nine o'clock at the um, at PRI, NHRA has a huge announcement about the Tony Stewart racing, you know, driver lineup for 2024. I think we wouldn't, there were the memes wouldn't have been made. Right. The, back and forth between people wouldn't have uh, been going on and people actually would have, you know, coincided and been like, Oh man, it's cool. You know, Tony Stewart's going to drive a drag, you know, she's going to drive a dragster this year. You know, the man's driven everything, you know, that has four wheels. And probably if you gave him a pro stock bike or a, or a, you know, like a, a road racing AMA bike, or was he probably drive that too? Right. You know, it's, it's just that unfortunately got blown way out of, out of proportion and you know like like i kind of said also is like you know listen I, I i get the big money bracket racing thing because the money that's being put up by some of these promoters and some of these rate and some of these tracks are was is great and if you're able to win one of those days it can make your whole entire season i mean you could you know you you crack in a, a fifty thousand dollar win heck your you know your season is pretty much paid for and you know Possibly from there on. I mean, it's right. it, you, could, you could live off of that for a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of, um, a couple of uh, years, possibly, you know, depending on how the racing schedule looks or what it was. But to get there, to do what you, you know, you have to do, it sometimes can be, you know, uh, impossible. And the money that you spend, I mean, I get it. The, the three days, four days that we spend at NHRA and national events for the amount of money that we, that we enter and the amount that we win, we probably all should have our heads checked, yep. you know, but we should not to cut you off, Rob, we should <laughs> all have our heads checked except for the fact of going back to how you started this segment, right? 
we're hanging around, we're making fun of each other, we're drinking beer, we're having a good time. If if you count that is part of the worth for the money that you're spending, it's cheap. Yeah. Right? So it, it's so my my thing is right now financially, um, I could afford what I'm doing better than I ever have in my life. And I can tell you that probably the first 10 years that I raced, I probably shouldn't have. Um, I raced through opening a business. I raced through going through a divorce. Uh, I've maxed out credit cards. I mean, I did everything wrong that you should do when it comes to racing. So the money, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to drive down the freeway and throw hundred dollar bills out of my window, but the money factor as far as being able to afford what I'm doing, I'm in better shape now than I've ever been. For me, I'm freaking tired, Rob. It's it's a lot of work. And in, 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 unless you're con- constantly pumping new blood into the sport, you get the people that started racing when they're, 18 years old and now they're 50 plus and all of a sudden uh the retirement home down in florida looks more appealing than than going to the racetrack every weekend or you know maybe racing something else like an rc car or you know going snowmobiling in the winter instead of racing in the summer i mean at the end of the day there isn't too many people and there are some but there's not too many people then fall in love with something at 18 years old and still love it and are as dedicated to it as much when they're 55. I mean, to me, marriage is a lot bigger than drag racing. And how many marriages have we seen fall apart in way less time than that? You know, it's just people's interests change. And that's one of the reasons why Chris and I do so many segments on up and coming racers. And we, we feature the Iaconas and the Bopies and so on, because if it's not for them, this sport is screwed because we're all just old and tired (laughs) and we don't really want to do it as much as we did 25 years ago. And that's exactly what I jumped in. You know, I, I was having, so I went out uh, Friday, uh, Saturday night, I worked, you know, um, you know, my, and my winter times is, is my time to work. And, and yep. that's what I, my regular job. And then I work part-time at Longhorn, you know, as a server it was, but I think right now, besides Thanksgiving, you take away Thanksgiving. I think I'm on like 49 days straight of working. Wow. I mean, but that's, that ends up turning into my racing money. So I got done Saturday night and I went out, um, I got a, a text message from Lee Zane. I don't right. know how Lee lives 10 minutes from me. Yep. So Lee, Hey, me and you know Marie, his his uh, girlfriend is going out to dinner. You know, want to join us? So we, you know, so I met him at the the local little pub, whatever it was, and we were sitting in our and we got talking. We said, you know, what's Super Gas going to look like in about five years? You know, when you think about it, even stock and Super Stock. I mean, right. you know, uh, maybe Super Comp not so much because there are some young faces that are in Super Comp. I mean, you have like Chase, you have Amanda, you have. Uh, um, you know, uh, Kevin Scholl, um, you know, guys like that are, you know, probably between the, the 25 to 40 age range where it was, you know, but, you know, for the most part, you look at super gas. I mean, I'm probably the young, young gun in super gas and I'm 44. Right. And you know, so there's, there's not a whole bunch of youth coming in that then the super gas where it was. And, you know, maybe you, you'll get one guy who'll jump in there and he'll break through. I mean, like, yeah. Like, you know, but you look at him, you're like, oh, my gosh, like the kid from Division three this year who kind of uh, kind of did well, J- Jesse Fritz. Yeah. You know, the bracket racer and he, he decided to go super gas race and they bought a roadster and he won like three or four or four events this year. It was. But, um, you know, that was like a rare occurrence that like somebody who's 19 years old is running super gas. Right. And that's the thing is, you know, where do you see super gas, you know, leading and in five years and 10 years. I mean, is it going to, you know, um, so it's, I don't, you know, 
I mean, like I said, I mean, like I said, I mean, what we run for is is definitely peanuts. But like you said, the experience, it's it, it's really got to be about the memories, the experience. And we got to look at that, you know, to sit back one day and just be like, you know, man, remember that time we, you know, sat around at the Keystones in, in 2022. And man, we sat there and we picked on Pete about his hair and we peeked on, you know, about exactly. his beard. And, this, and that was a great experience. That was a great weekend. And, and yep. look back at, you know, like not about the money and maybe it's the youth that's coming in is that they have a whole different perspective on how racing is. And that's the first thing is all about how much money they can win. Right. You know, listen, I would, I would wholeheartedly go big money bracket racing in a heartbeat, but you know, they kind of pick on, you know, they like, they, they said something about the post that was, you know, that, that Chris poster it was. And, you know, they were like, well, you know, you spend three hundred and fifty dollars to go race and to go for four days or it was and to win, you know, X amount of dollars. Yeah. And it's okay, I understand, you know, it's a 20, 20, 20, 50, 20, whatever it was, and you spend nine hundred and fifty dollars. Right. It, most of the guys double enter. Yep. So it's two, you know, you're looking at two grand probably. And then if you lose first round. The buybacks, I mean, I was looking at the SFG race, I think that's this weekend or that's going on right now. I think it's like $200 each day to buy the buyback. Right. Or your, you know, your weekend could be over. If you double enter and lose first round every day and buy back, you're four grand in the hole. Mm-hmm. And that's play amount, you know, in, and if you don't hit that pay window, that's a pretty big chunk of, uh, yeah. of uh, you know, thing to, to, to take on, the, you know, not including your, your fuel, your food, your, you know, definitely alcohol you know if, right. and, and wear and tear and expenses and it, it just it, it can be a very expensive weekend but guys sometimes don't look at the big you know they look at that and they just look at oh it's 20 grand to win it's 50 grand to win stuff and and uh, you know it's just I, I guess everybody has a different perspective on things i you know not that i'm you know pro nhra and this is you know this is whatever it is but to me it's something i do with my father He's 76 years old. Right. You know, I, I'm enjoying these memories with him as much as I can, as much as we go at each other and we go each other, at each other's throat or was. But, you know, because there's going to be like, you know, I think as I'm getting older is, you know, and I've already lost my mom six years ago, yeah. is that look back as, the, you know what, cherish these memories that are out there because there's going to come one day when you're going to wake up and they're not going to be there. Yeah. And like, I got to go racing and dad's not here right? Or, or whatever. And it's like, you know, where do you go from that? You know, do you, you know, some people could just put everything for sale because the fact is that they don't have that drive anymore to do it because they're, you know, their dad was their sidekick. Their dad yep. was the guy. Yep. And, you know, Chris, I- I'm surprised that Chris is, well, I shouldn't say I'm surprised because he's a friggin' idiot, but I'm surprised that he, says the things that he says because if he actually took the time to sit down with his pea brain and think all the memories that he's had with his kids running junior dragsters and I'll never forget when he won super comp at English town for the national event or his kids seeing him win or the NHRA banquets and all that stuff and listen if you're priorities change if your opinion of what you think is a good race day changes if you're you know the time that you could spend or your desire to do whatever it is changes that's all fine and nice but just because it changed doesn't mean that what you did before that is bad right I went at my my first run at a well first run in a long time uh, bracket racing, I, I went to Lebanon Valley and I did the do's and triple tens. I had an absolute blast. I put more passes on my car in that one weekend than I have in probably the last two years combined. It was close to home. The family came. We had a great time. Now, does that mean that NHRA divisional suck now? No, no. I, I did something. I had a good time. And if I decided that that's all I wanted to do from now on, that's what fits me and my desires. But that doesn't mean that anything I did before that sucks. I don't understand why people get on that soapbox of, 
well, I do this now, so everything I did before that sucks. I, I just don't get it. A lot of it just is social media in general. It's, you know, that, that soapbox is now is is multiplied. You know, that soapbox used to be, you know, that, that soapbox before social media where it was was calling your, your buddy up on Monday morning after a race and being like, you know, oh, let me tell you how I was treated here. And, and, and you know, da 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 yeah, and, right. You know, it, it never really made it any farther than that phone call, you know, that where it was. Well, now it's, you know, uh, um, you have a great time at, at Vince's race or it was and you go on Facebook and or you, you say, Rob, you know, had a great time at the Dave Stein race or it was and you get on Facebook and you praise the promoter for all the hard work that they did or it was. Right. And, you know, everybody chimes in with their opinions. Right. You know, it could be good or bad. I mean, yeah, all the and the other thing too is is it's very easy to give your opinion when there's very little consequence. Yeah. Right. You tend to be able to run your mouth a lot more than you normally would, right? Hey Rob, you know, I was at your race and and I don't think I was treated fairly. And maybe we could do this different next time face to face. Online could be screw Rob, his races suck, and I'm never going to him again because you're 200 miles apart. Yeah. It's, it's and, the and further I, you are the part, the bigger the balls get, you know? I've had that. I've had a racers. I've had a couple of racers call me out on Facebook and be like, you were at my race. Why yeah. didn't you? You were just standing in front of me a day yeah. ago. What happened? Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, that's the funny part about it is like, you know, guys, like, you know, if there's an issue with the track, if there's issue with, you know, how you felt that we ran you in a rotation or it was like, come to me about it. Like, you know, I'm always, you know, you've been in my races. I'm always accessible. I'm never like, I'm never that guy who hides up in the tower and like, you know, like, you know, you never can find me. It's, it's one of these things where either me or my staff is somebody is there to answer your questions, you know, about anything. Right. And, and stuff. And, you know, but I, I guess it's just social media in general. It's just how social media is perceived anymore. It's, you know, like I said, I mean, you know, the whole Tony and, and Leah thing. I mean, that could have been reworded a different way. And then, you know, because of the way it was worded, it blew up like a freaking atom bomb. I mean, it just was like, you know, kaboom. Like, you know, here comes, you know, everything, you know, every meme, every this, that, you know, everybody's got a, you know, thing. And, you know, it's. It, it, Let's be honest. It could have been worded differently, and guess what? Everyone would have found something else to bitch about, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But yeah, I, I know we got way off topic where it was, but you know, no, it's uh, all good. I, I have to say I, one. It's all relevant to it. What one thing I have to say? I am amazed at how when you're talking, you center that ceiling fan right above your head. It's perfect. Yeah, it's uh. <laughs> For for someone that's a little OCD, I appreciate you doing that for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> little stain. No, 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 no. Inspector Gadget. Look like you're wearing a crown. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Inspector Gadget. But yeah, I mean it's a, uh, you know, guys. I mean our our guys, like I said on my on my live feed, is that they got to understand is that, you know, it's a business, and I I don't think we look we look at it as it's a hobby to us. Right, but they these tracks that we're going to. It's a business. They got to make money. They got to see a profit at the end of a weekend, or we don't get invited back. Right, and that's really what it comes down to is that you know, and like I said, you know, when when there when we raise up a, a gate fee five bucks, or you know, an entry fee five bucks, or ten bucks, or was everybody thinks that we're trying to rip their eyeballs out and we're and we're we're ruthless people and we're trying to become millionaires off of it. It's like no, it's you know, hey. The taxes for this racetrack just went up, you know, 15 grand for the year, you know, more than what it already was. That's why, you know, the, the blowback from the five dollars where it was just going towards the gate or going towards you know, us because we're trying to, you know, I raised my membership fee up five bucks this year. The bank would went up five bucks. I mean, right. you know, yeah, I haven't heard, but it's, it's just, you know, like, listen, I mean, I go to Staples and you know what, I used to go buy a pack of pens and, you know, a couple of reams of paper or was, it was, you know, 10 bucks and Hey, okay. 10 bucks or was now I go there and it's, it's 45. It's like, right. you know, like, okay. Like, you know, it, it, this stuff isn't cheap anymore. And no, no. And, and it's, you know, it, it's crazy to me that anyone in this day and age would question 
going up on a fee, especially when it's like five or 10 bucks, because anybody that has even remotely been paying attention has seen that everything has gone up. I mean, just your fuel to tow your trailer, your support trailer to get to the track yeah. right, has gone up. If you needed tires for that trailer, the price has gone up. The, the brakes and tires and fuel and oil that you're putting in the tow vehicle has gone. I mean, everything has gone up. And it's not like you went from making three and a half million to 3.4 million. Then you wouldn't care about the five bucks. But I, I don't think people really have a handle in, in you definitely do this for the love of the sport way more so than making a living because if you were able to make a good living doing it, you wouldn't have worked 60 days straight in the off season. Yeah. Right? I mean, and it's the, not real rocket science to figure it out. I mean, trust me, there are promoters out there who, you know, who are looking to make a, a, a killing on their events and, you know, you know, you know, uh, they don't make, they don't stick by the flyers, you know, their payouts, you know, they, they might say, well, I'm going to take in 200 cars and they end up taking 400, you know, whatever, because they're trying to like, they're trying to cash in on it was, sure. you know, I'm not, I do it for love of the, of the sport. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. And that's where, you know, um, I had this discussion with Dana this today. We were, we, I mean, when I tell you Friday night, we were set at four dates and that if we had two weekends and that's all we had. And I was like, you know, where do we go? And then, of course, you know, some guys chimed in, you know, why don't you think about Lebanon Valley? Why don't you think about Epping where it was? And, and I my thing really would come down to was. Epping and Lebanon already kind of have tops for some top dragster series going on. Right. They, I mean, they have a pretty stout ser Super Street series at Lebanon. Yep. I know they have a dot 90 deal at Epping where it was with Super Gas and Super Comp. Street yep. was. And I'm not sure if they have Super Comp or Super Gas at Lebanon. I'm, I I thought they had a Super Comp or, or something. Or I, I, they experimented once or twice with with 890 last year, and I'm sure they'll probably be building on it this year. But the the thing is, like even if you said to uh, I'll just say Wayne because I know he runs the track at Lebanon Valley. If you said to Wayne, listen, I want to bring my series up there. No one would be worried about, again, this is my opinion. No one would be worried about your dot 90 series coming up there for one weekend a year and stepping on everyone's toes, right? In my opinion, that's no difference than, than Vince and Gary coming up there with a big dollar bracket race. That's not stepping on their weekly bracket program. It's not going to change anything. Yeah. The issue is location. And one of the reasons why you had so many eggs in the basket at ATCO is because that's the central track to yep. all the other tracks that you run at. So it's not like you intentionally put all your eggs in one basket at ATCO or you don't want to go to Lebanon Valley or Epping. It's just that your group of racers, that's where they're from. You know, this would be no different than if you said one day, uh, we're going to, we got a date at Rockingham. We're going to go race there. You'd get just as few cars as if you brought the show up to Lebanon Valley because your your core of racers just aren't going to travel that far. Yep. That's one of the reasons why I have such a tough time getting down to your races because it's a friggin' hike. Yeah. It's a hike and you race on Sunday, which is awesome to go to one of your races and you get two races in. But for me to drive to Maple Grove, hopefully get lucky and go a couple of rounds on Sunday and then have to get in my rig and drive the thing back. And it takes me 12 hours to get home because Sunday traffic's a disaster. It's just not a good time for me. Well, that would be all your guys. That's what would be happening if they came up North or went yeah. way down South. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's really what it comes down to. I mean, there are a few, of you know, the guys, I mean, like the Volpies. I mean, the Volpies come off of, of uh, you know, uh, Port Gipsy. So, I mean, that's a, you know, that's a haul for them. I mean, the, the, I've, uh, you know, and there's a couple of guys that I talk to that live on the island. And, I mean, they tell me, you know, like George Smith. I mean, George Smith, you know, with the, the live wire super gas, he is, right. he, they, him and TJ, his crew chief, leave at 4.30 in the morning 
for one of my races on a Friday because they know it's the best time for them to get off the island. They said if we hit like eight o'clock in the morning trying to get off the island, we don't get off the island until like one in the afternoon. <laughs> if they leave then, they might get your Sunday race if they're lucky. And, and I'm like, you know, if I had to get to that point where like I, I'm leaving at eight o'clock in the morning Friday and not getting off of the island that I live on till one o'clock, guess what? I'm turning back. I'm turning back and I'm going and I'm saying, you know what? It's, right. It's, and, and- and like to the point that we were making earlier, 20 years ago, that might not have been that big of a deal for us, right? Or we might not have been thrilled about it, but we would do it because we love the sport so much. Now, 20 years later, it's like, you know, the, just the desire just isn't. And there are plenty of people that are like the people you just mentioned or the Volpies or whatever, but It's not the norm. And as you get older, your desire to be miserable shrinks, right? Like you're saying you're 44 years old and you just work how many consecutive days in your off season. Are you going to want to do this same routine when you're 54 years old? And I'm looking at that, like, you know, what am I going to do? No, I mean, that's, that's the problem. Yeah. What am I going to do in 10 years? I mean, do I really want to keep on doing, you know, working a second job and, you know, just so that, I can afford it. I mean, you know, and I mean, you know, maybe I, maybe I find a sugar mama, you know, in that 10 years or it was, and, and, you know, I have a, a dual income coming in and at least that helps out a little bit. I mean, you know, right. being a single income owning a house is not the norm right now. I mean, in in this day and age, I mean, to, to try to pay bills, it's, it's right. tough. Well, I just went to the, just went to the grocery store about two hours ago and That's I bought, painful, isn't it? I spent $175. I'm like, <laughs> What the hell did I buy? I didn't buy you anything. Out with a bag and a half. Yeah, and that was <laughs> like you know, and it's just it's just crazy, but yeah, yeah. yeah. but you know, it's just uh, I you know, I don't know. I mean, I you know, I just uh, kind of a depressing last show of the year, Chris. I got to tell you. <laughs> hey, I'm just sitting here being quiet. I have I, <laughs> I all I did was was provide the platform. You guys. Right. Well, Rob, I will say that I am looking forward to your announcements coming up. Uh, it's definitely a, a ray of sunshine coming out of what didn't look very good a week ago. So, uh, yeah, it, that's uh, awesome. Not going to lie, there was a conversation with me and one of the track managers of canceling the season for this year. Really? Yes, it came to that point, and we you know, threw a Hail Mary up, or it was. They were lucky enough to give me one more date. And then I reached out to a fellow racer who runs with us, um, Derek Clark, and uh, re- he has a good friend of his that lives uh, not too far from him that owns a racetrack. And uh, he reached out to him, and we were able to work out a date, and then uh, was able to uh, reach out to um, another track, and we got another date from there. So we have three different tracks and five weekends. Uh, of racing that we're going to have at least this year or so. Uh, unfortunately, I can't announce the dates. I wish I could. Um, no, that's all right. It's it's knowing it will, that it's coming should be good enough for a lot of people. That's awesome. Uh, it will be announced this weekend. Hopefully, I just have to make sure all the you know the the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted before sure. you know, with the racetracks and stuff before uh, because actually one of the racetracks have already announced their. Um, schedule for this year so i just you know we just have to make sure that everything's you know everything's kosher on that end and and stuff before we announce it but you know we were able to still get 10 uh 10 full races uh five weekends so um pretty happy about that and uh yeah it's Boy, just, it's, uh, amazing. it's amazing what a week will do huh uh it's uh yeah it's been a it's been a whirlwind uh it's definitely been a whirlwind week i mean it was like you know going into Friday night. I mean, I trust me, I don't like doing live videos unless, you know, uh, unless, you know, we have to. And yep. you know, Dana says, you know, th- I'm talking to Dana on Friday and she goes, you can't make a Facebook post about this. It has to be a live video. Right. Like you explain to these people, like, this is where we're at. This is what we're, what we are, or our, our heads are against right now. Like, you know, they, they, she said, uh, just a Facebook post just doesn't show your emotion and, and how concerned you really are. And um, she says, you know, I want you to go live tonight and I'll join you. And then unfortunately, I couldn't get her on the live feed. Yeah, of course. So, yeah. 
<laughs> so I said, well, oh, I, listen, this is the way it's going to be and, and such. And and then, you know, like I said, uh, Sunday, the skies opened up and it was just like, oh, OK, I guess we're yeah, I guess we're doing this. So good. Well, that's great news. That's the way you want to end this season. That's for sure. <laughs> Say Pete, I mean, I know, you know, depending on your travel schedule, was three of them were during the summertime. All right. All right. Now we're talking. So, so just Rob, let me let me throw this question at you though. You don't have to say where, but is it new locations for or new tracks for you guys that you haven't been to? One new location. One new location? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, cool. The track that is uh not on the division one schedule. We'll just we'll just point it at that. Wow. It is an NHRA track. It is not on the NHRA Division One schedule or the open schedule, but it is a new track for us for the series. Excellent. So good. And actually, speaking of divisional, I mean, uh, open uh, series, the Canadian Open Series is going to be announcing a new sponsor um, in the I next saw that too, yeah. week or so. So there's only two open races in the states. The rest are up north of the border. Yeah, because Echo had an open race. Um, Echo had an open race at one time. They did try an open race at Lebanon Valley, and they did try one at Epping, and they were colossal failures. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I think they did one at Lebanon Valley like two years ago, and I yeah. think two years I, ago, and it was cold as get like fifteen cars. Yeah, wow. it was so cold. Elijah and I went to that. Yeah. So it was like the beginning of May. It was ridiculously cold. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Well, cool. Glad you were able to come on and kind of fill everybody with a little bit of hope. Yep. Yeah. We uh good, and hopefully everybody will be on pins and needles waiting for us to uh, announce that schedule, and. Uh, Frank, you can uh, tell Volpe he can uh, text me to uh, get his uh, get his request uh, fulfilled that he texted me about the other night. So, all right, but yeah, so you guys have a good uh, holiday and uh, I actually have a good Christmas. I can't say holiday because Pete will yell. So, um, no, you took that the wrong way. I I'm I I'm the other way. All the people that say. Oh, it's Merry Christmas, not Happy Holidays. I'm like, well, what if you're Jewish? <laughs> it is Happy Holidays, but everyone freaks out about it. So that's why I, I posted that. It's like, oh, goody, we're at the it's Merry Christmas, not Happy Holidays <laughs> thing. It's like, Jesus, not everyone celebrates Christmas. Relax. <laughs> uh, you just can't win. No, you can't. No. Nope. All right, Rob. Well, very cool. Again, thank you for coming on. Kind of obviously very short notice, last minute. And I'm always available. I'm always watching you guys. So, see the to see what Pete's got a Pete and you got a chat about a Good to you. what Jerron and what Jerron has to say to uh, fire up Pete. So, yeah. Well, Jerron said he's been sitting here. He he's uh, been sitting bouncing off his internal rev limiter for twenty minutes. So. How many texts have you gotten? None. Not a one. None? Really? Nothing. I'm impressed. The good thing he probably can't find the, the login information for Zoom. That's good. Tell him we changed it just for this occasion. It's all changed, yeah. And everything's new. <laughs> so. All right, guys. For the last time in 2023. Before we bug out, though. Everybody who was part of our show this year, thank you guys so much for taking time out of your life to come on and hang out with us. There's so many other people. There's Kit G, Pete Medeiros, um, everybody that jumps in and says hi to people that join our page. Our page is like exploded this year. Um, so thank you all so very, very much. All the sponsors you. behind you. TSR, Racing Products. Everybody knows the Monroe family. Uh, Ralph Blackburn, Blackburn Engineering, Straight Line Performance and Automotive. I'm sure you've heard of that guy. Once or twice. Dues and High Performance Products. They are going to be coming back with us to do the, the second annual PDs. Hoops Fire Prevention. Thank you so much for being part of the show. 
Pete, thank you. Rob, you've been a, a big guest this year. Thank you. And I'm glad everything has worked out and uh, but continued success with the Mid-Atlantic Dawn 90 series. Thank you, guys. So you guys have a good uh, Christmas, holiday, New Year's, all that fun stuff. And look Kwanzaa, forward to it. whatever, yeah. Yeah. Kwanzaa, Hanukkah. Yep. So, there you go. Oh, uh, what's he saying? Uh, watching paint dry while I listen to these crack bunch of idiots. <laughs> Who's that, Gerard? Of course it is. Yeah, tell him that, that his computer probably gets other podcasts, so feel free. <laughs> well, it's it's ninety eight percent directed at you. It's when, when sure. he, if he sure. needs me to tell him to say something, he'll actually say I, Chris and forget. I figured I would be Gerard's hero right now because I called Chris a dumbass on live whatever this is he probably thought you were talking about me and then he realized <laughs> no he, believe me he knew who i was talking about <laughs> i know the first time he said it i'm like what did i post yeah. <laughs> oh like wait the other dumbass and things and then i'm like oh wait a minute now i know who he's yeah, talking yeah. <laughs> good stuff what'd you say oh yeah you got pt i'm assuming that means points yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for tuning in all year, and uh, here's to a bigger and better 2024. Onward and cheers. I don't drink. I don't drink beer, so we'll salute with a soda. I'm out, so I'll just pretend. There you go. All right. Happy holidays to everybody. Happy New Year. We will be back. I don't know. Probably the second week of uh, January to kick this yeah. whole. Sure. Yeah, Chris will be back Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New well, Year's actually, Eve. No, because you are to, right on the first one. Christmas Eve, I will go on Facebook Live, and I have something very, very funny to read. And I think you'll all enjoy it. I did it last year. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I get a chuckle out of it. Cool. I, I get a chuckle out of most of the stupid things I do, but that's If okay. you're happy, I'm happy, buddy. Oh, Whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right happy holidays merry christmas happy new year uh and whatever else police navidad yeah that goes along with it take care everybody have a safe holiday season we will talk to you all after the first of the year happy holidays happy new year take care everybody <laughs>